Hello everyone and welcome to Book and Stitches. My name is Amy and I am so excited that you have joined me today. In this YouTube um, channel I'm going to be sharing my favorite books that I've read and also stitching I have done throughout the week, ones I finished and also some haul that I've received. I'm really excited that you've joined me today. So just to introduce myself, I am. I have some questions here. If I keep looking down, it's because I have some stuff written down. I, I'm really nervous, so I wanted to make sure I wrote down what I was going to say. So just to introduce myself, I'm going to answer some questions that I copied from a, another floss tuber, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. I'll link her video down below. Um, she's a wonderful YouTuber, um, floss tuber, who shares her stitching every week, and she's just great to watch. So the first question is, where do I live? I live in West Valley City, Utah. Um, I'm originally from Salem, Oregon. I grew up there pretty much my whole life, but we moved to Utah about five years ago for my husband's job. And we really enjoy living here. It's a really great place. Number two, what do I do for a living? Um, I at first was a teacher. I taught elementary um, age students, but I quit working after I had my son who is two, and he is wonderful. I really do miss teaching, though. Number three, do I have any kids? I do. I have one son. His name is Magnus, and he is two and a half, and he is so much fun. It's a great age, too. They're just, his language is exploding. It's really fun to, to be with. Um, I also have a dog. Um, her name is Penny, and she is a German short-haired pointer, and she is a lot of fun, too. She's very active, so she keeps us busy. Number four, what other hobbies besides cross-stitch do you enjoy? I enjoy anything outdoors, really. Hiking, canoeing, camping. I family canoed a lot growing up. Um, we picked blackberries along the Willamette River in Salem, and that was really fun. I also enjoy crafting. I mainly do a lot of cross-stitch. Um, I have dabbled, more like put my toe in to using a silhouette and cutting out vinyl but it was just for a Christmas gift, so I don't expect to find see any of that on this channel because it is not my forte at all. Um, I also enjoy singing. Um, I did a lot of that growing up, and I just love singing and listening to music. And I also bake and cook a lot. Um, number five, what is my favorite movie? The first movie I thought of in thinking of this question was Steel Magnolias. It's a really old movie that has Sally Field and Julie Roberts, and it's just wonderful. It's a really great chick flick. It'll make you cry. It'll make you laugh. It's just a really fantastic movie. I also enjoy um, Disney movies. I watch a lot of them with my son, so um, my favorite probably is Beauty and the Beast. And then I've also watched a lot of Moana and Princess and the Frog. I've tried showing Emperor's New Groove to my son, and he just isn't into it, but someday he will be because it's a great movie. I also enjoy Lord of the Rings. I also watch a lot of documentaries. Um, probably one of my favorites is The Planet Earth is really, really great. And yeah, any, any movies that I can kind of learn something from, I really enjoy. What is my favorite TV show? I don't watch a ton of TV. If I do watch TV, it's mostly through like Netflix, Hulu, those kind of things. We don't have cable. But I really enjoy the Great British Baking Show. And I also enjoy really any historical kind of fiction show. So Downton Abbey, Call the Midwife. I've just started watching The Tudors, and I really enjoy that. Um, I love learning about new places, cultures, periods in history. Um, we also have been watching, my husband and I have been watching Bob's Burgers, and that's really fun. It's a really, it's a really great show. And also, I watch a lot of like anime shows, so I, not a ton, but I do really enjoy like Sword Out Online. Um, what are some of the other ones? Um, Death Note, Psychopaths, and um, oh my goodness, I just totally spaced the name of it. It'll come to me in a second. Oh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is also really excellent. If you enjoy anime, I would recommend those ones. Those ones are pretty common. Um, we've also started watching Castlevania, and I'm really enjoying that as well. Although I usually don't watch a ton of fantasy, but I'm actually enjoying that one. Um, favorite book? Ooh, that one's a really hard question. 
I really enjoy, I'm going to share some of my favorite books later and I'm throughout, as I do YouTube more videos, I'm going to every time highlight a, maybe a favorite book. I might even do a separate video highlighting some books. Let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. Um, a separate video for books and then a different video for cross stitching. Um, I'm going to do that at the end of the video so if you don't like cross stitch if that's not something you're into then you can skip ahead to the end and I'm going to talk that's where I'm going to talk about books. Um, but my favorite book genres are um, historical fiction, I really like reading memoirs, biographies, autobiographies, um, anything that I can really, again, learn from. I love learning about new cultures, new places. Um, I'm trying to think what other books I really like. I think that's it. Um, I do read some fantasy, um, some science fiction, but mostly I think a majority of my bookshelf is like historical fiction or memoirs and stuff like that. This bookshelf, oops, can you see? Ugh, I can't point. <laughs> this bookshelf behind me is a lot of um, just our like nonfiction books, like textbooks, and um, both my husband and I speak Chinese, and so a lot of our like study stuff is up there. There's a, a Lonely Planet China guide. You can kind of see it my, on my shoulder right there. I'll tilt my shoulder. Um, a lot of our, our, my bookshelf that has all of my fiction, nonfiction books is in our bedroom. So I probably won't show you that in the video, but that's where a majority of my books are. So don't think that this shelf behind me is, oops, this, <laughs> I can point. I'm going to learn how to point in doing a video. That this one behind me is just all the books I have because it's, excuse me, mostly just a mishmash of like textbooks and stuff from college that, you know, we decided to keep around. Oh, another hobby that I enjoy doing is playing board games. As you can see behind me, um, we love playing board games, my husband and I. We get together a lot with friends before COVID um, and playing games together, whether it's, you know, you know, games that we play all together or like competing against one another. Some of my favorites are, oh goodness, I have so many. I love Dominion is really fun and um, we play a lot of really obscure games, games that a lot of people probably haven't heard of and that's really thanks to my husband before I got married, I didn't really play a ton of like variety of board games, but because of him, I enjoy playing them. Anyway, um, so we love playing lots of different board games. Um, last, okay, number eight is favorite music. I love, love, love music. Mostly Broadway. <laughs> I listen to a lot of Broadway. Um, favorite shows, Hamilton, obviously. Um, I love Anything Goes. Into the Woods, Little Shop of Horrors. I could do a whole entire video on just shows that I love because a majority of what I listen to is that. I also listen to a lot of Sarah Bareilles and Lake Street Dive. If you haven't heard of them, they're wonderful. Um, kind of a variety of things. Country music, jazz, pop, all of like the latest hits. Billie Eilish is really great. Um, you know, I grew up listening to like Maroon 5, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, you know, the usual 90s bands I really enjoy as well. And something that, number nine, the last question is, what kind of things do I do while I cross stitch? This is a question that um, that YouTuber didn't answer, but I thought is when I'd throw in. Um, when I cross stitch, I usually am watching a, a TV show or a movie. I try to pick ones that I've like, seen before. I also watch my husband play video games. That's what I've been doing a lot lately. He's been playing through Hollow Knight and Spider-Man on the PlayStation. And so I would just watch him play. I also listen to music or an audiobook or podcast. I really enjoy listening to the podcast Ologies. And I'll link that in the description. It's a really awesome podcast um, that is really fun to listen to. Each channel, each episode, she talks about a different um, field of study. So she talks about like volcanoes and um, Tasmanian devils and deer and she interviews people who are in that field that are experts and it's really entertaining. You, I learn a lot through that video. Okay, that's enough of the questions. Sorry, that kind of lasted a long time. So let's go through some finishes. I have a couple. I have a lot of my stuff off here to the side so if I kind of turn away then that's, I'm, that's what I'm grabbing. Um, 
I will show you, oh dear, did they not grab that bag? Oh no, oh here it is. Okay, I'm gonna show a couple different finishes. Um, I don't have any like framed or anything like that. I'm not really, I haven't really figured out the whole framing thing, how I wanna frame them. The ones that I have framed, I did do in hoops and I gave those away as gifts. And those ones were Satsuma Streets, Pretty Little London and Satsuma Streets Pretty Little Paris and those ones if um, I'm I finished one of another one of hers and I'm gonna show it if um, I'll link her Etsy shop below it is a fantastic shop she has um, a lot of really wonderful patterns that are just so much fun to stitch they're really easy the patterns are really easy to read um, oh no I don't have the one I was gonna show that's okay I'll show at least one of them. Okay, so this one is Satsuma Street, and I'll um, link it below. Um, it's not ironed, so sorry. Um, this is this is Pretty Little Seattle, and this one I stitched over the summer. It took me a while. Um, last, I did it started it last summer in like July, and then I finished it in I believe April it took me a little bit of a while but I love the colors I love the um it's just really really beautiful um the cityscape my husband is originally from Seattle and I've traveled many times to Seattle so this this city is particularly dear to my heart um so there's that I also have Pretty Little Chicago finish. And again, sorry that this is not ironed. Um, this is also by Satsuma Street. I just love with her patterns, the color saturation. I love her color choices and how each city has a different um, color palette. So this one has a lot more browns and blues and oranges, whereas Seattle, you just saw, has a lot of greens. She tries to focus a lot on picking kind of a primary color that is around that city. And then she builds upon that. It's she her patterns are just really great. So there's that. Um, I also finished. Let's see. I'll show you two, a few more, a few more. This one is called "Comparison Is a Thief of Joy," and this is from an Etsy shop. I love this pattern, and it's such a great saying to live by. And I'll link that shop below as well. This one is Sleep Well. It's from one of my favorite movies, A Princess Bride. I'm going to put this in our guest room. I thought it was just hilarious. So, Sleep Well, I'll most likely kill you in the morning. And then this one was a freebie. I can't remember who it was by, but I will link it below. Home is our safe haven. And this one, I did not use all of the called for colors. I used... Um, a lot of variegated thread that I had and this one is stitched on a 14 count gray Ada I forgot to tell the other ones what they were on most of them are on Ada yep um, sleep well is stitched on a 14 count white Ada the comparison is on a 14 count black Ada and the Chicago is stitched on an 18 count Ada and the Seattle is stitched on a 14 count gray Ada so those are just a couple of my of my finishes. Oh, I do have one more actually. This one is Country Card Needleworks Happy Harvest. And this one is on a 20 25 count even weave mushroom by Lugana. And this was my first try on even weave. I was really nervous to do even weave but I really enjoyed it. It was really a lot more simple than I thought. This is all the called for colors. And I just love the variegation. That barn is just gorgeous. I'm probably going to do a finish soon and frame it. And then I will show it in my next video. Not Probably not the next video, but one of the other future videos. Okay. So there are some of my finishes. I'm hoping to be a bit more brave and do some more finishes. Like 
real finishes framing kind of things but I just haven't done it yet um, I wasn't quite sure what to do <laughs> for the, a lot of those framings so now I will show some of my whips so the first one I'm going to show is my most recent start and this is Animal Alphabet by Prairie Schooler I recently bought this pattern um, a couple weeks ago from my local stitching store. It's called Craft Center of Fine Stitchery and it's in Salt Lake City. If you live local, go there. It's a wonderful little shop. They have all sorts of patterns and fabric and they do their own framing. It's just a really, really great shop. So this is Animal Alphabet and I just really love like the colors are really beautiful and it's a really simple pattern. I'm going to sew it for, stitch it for my son's bedroom. And this is all I have done so far. I'm stitching this on a 28 count Doblin ivory even weave. So I just have the first part of the first square done. I started it last night and wanted to try to get done as much as I could with the thread that I have. I was missing about half of the threads. They're all DMC and all the called for colors. Um, you can't really, my camera is kind of weird, but you can kind of see the stitches. It's a really fun pattern. I'm, well, for a box, it's really fun to stitch so far. I can't wait to stitch this one. I bought this fabric on one, two, three stitch. And as soon as I got it, I was like, I have to start stitching <laughs> because it's just so darn cute. Another start that I finished, I started about um, maybe a week ago, not even a week ago, I think it was a couple days ago, is Hands on Design Let's Talk Autumn. This is one of the new patterns that just came out, I believe this year. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm stitching this, sorry about the glare, I'm stitching this Hello Autumn, um, little round. And this is my first time stitching on linen. I thought I would give it a go since even weave was pretty easy. And this is a 32 count chalkboard black linen. So I just have, oops, my threads are in the way. I just have this Hello Autumn done. I'm really enjoying stitching the linen. I didn't think I would. I was really nervous again to start. When I started stitching a couple years ago, I um, did just exclusively Ada with the dream of starting doing linen and even weave. And this year I kind of made the goal to just be brave and just do it. <laughs> so I did. And I'm actually really enjoying it. I might even just switch over to linen and even weave from now on because it was just so easy to stitch. The next um, whip that I have is a Christmas whip. I've been really wanting to do a Christmas stitch and this is another one I'm doing on an even weave. This is a 32 count um, even weave I got from Hobby Lobby. Here's the the tag for it. It's a taupe. But, oh, it's um, Country Cottage Needleworks Merry Christmas. Sorry, I'm getting used to the way my camera is flipped, so I'm really sorry that it's kind of messed up. <laughs> um, so I am doing it with some of the called for colors, um, but I because of COVID I wasn't able to get a lot of the colors. And so I've kind of just looked at my stash and whatever classic color needleworks um, threads I had. Um, I'm not going to stitch the houses. I'm just going to do the border and the words. And so this is what I have done so far. I'm doing it on a plaid, a plaid um, fabric, which I've never done like a actual fabric that has um, a pattern on it. So this is what I've gotten done so far and I'm really enjoying it. It's a really easy pattern. Great for Christmas. It shouldn't take too long to stitch. I'm really excited. So those are just a couple of my whips that I've been working on. I try to do usually just a little bit on each every week. Um, sometimes I will exclusively stitch on one for a while, like the Hello Autumn, I've, or the Let's Talk Autumn, I've been stitching exclusively on for a while just because I really enjoy it. And then I started the Alphabet one yesterday. And then hopefully we'll just try to do a little bit here and there. So yeah. The other thing, oh, so I use, as far as like 
bags and things like that. I have one fancy bag. This one is Dot Dot Goose. Um, I'll link her shop below. It's a wonderful bag. It's got this lovely thick vinyl with the, it's got bees and sunflowers and in the back is just polka dots and I just love it. And then I mostly have these bags I bought on Amazon that are just like kind of cheap. <laughs> Not, they're really good bags, but I really enjoy them. They're great to keep all my whips together and everything. Okay. So next, the haul that I have, I actually have quite a lot and that's, I was surprised when I was putting everything together how much haul I have. That won't be common. I don't plan on really buying a ton of things um, in the next little bit. My anniversary is next week though, so I'm hoping my husband, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, that um, I get like a gift card for a favorite stitching shop so I can get some more stuff. We'll see. So I only have haul every once in a while, not a ton but I thought I would show what I've gotten so far. So the first thing I got is some fabric from Joann's. I have a Halloween finish that I didn't show, but I'm gonna hopefully finish it soon, and then I can show you guys. But these are some of the fabrics that I bought. Oh no. These are just so cute, especially this one. I mean, look at that. It's like retro cats and pumpkins and owls it's just really pretty so there's that one and then this one is just pumpkins and this other one is just little little baby pumpkins and little ghosts so I'm hoping to use one of those to finish a pattern I also got some red kind of plaid I might use this to finish the harvest country college needleworks harvest one that I finished so there's that um, I also, from Joann's, got this sign. It says, Give Thanks. It's kind of a little, like, one of those paddles. Um, I can't decide if I want to put a stitch over the lettering or if I want to just, like, have it be one side be kind of Thanksgiving and the other side do, like, a Christmas, maybe, so I can double use it. We'll see. And I also... Oh, goodness. Got some other things to finish with. This really cute basket with a little apple on it. As well as, just bring it over my stuff. Some sticky board for finishing. Some even weave Monaco. I'm gonna try to dye it to writ dye and maybe coffee tea dye, but I'm not brave. We'll see. I also got a couple um, fat quarters. This one's a plaid, kind of a plaid. This one's gingham, and then this is just really cute. I was trying to decide which one of those to use, possibly for the harvest one as well. I don't know. And then some Velcro. This is for a different craft thing. And then from Michael's, today I got the rest of the thread that I need for the animal alphabet. And I also got some DMC Irish Linen 28 Count Even Weave Lugana. I'm really excited to stitch on that as well. And then from 123 Stitch, I got quite a few things. I got the Scarlet House um, Seeking Refuge. I love this pattern. This is another new pattern that came out this year. What drew me to this pattern was the saying on the bottom. And it says, when the world seems to be out of control, I find a way to nurture my soul, seeking refuge with needle and thread, the angst and anxiety no longer I dread. I just love that. That is the whole reason why I got into cross stitching. I've been stitching for uh, maybe like 10 years or so. Um, I find it a really great outlet for my anxiety and depression and so that is why I stitch in that just fit perfectly. I also got the um, Let's Talk Autumn and the alphabet. Oh no, I got the alphabet one from the stitching shop. But I got the um, Let's Talk Autumn was the other pattern that I got from them as well. And then 
or no wait, I bought those patterns from, not from 123 Stitch, I'm so sorry. I bought those patterns from the Craft Center of Fine Stitchery here in Salt Lake, it's a local shop. So Scarlet House, Let's Talk Autumn, and The Alphabet, The Animal Alphabet, are the ones that I got from them, sorry. What I got from 123 Stitch was fabric. <laughs> Um, I got the Jobelin Ivy Linen that I'm, or even weave that I'm using for the alphabet. I also got a 40 count um, Light Mocha Newcastle Linen, which is really pretty dark, kind of darkish color linen, or light, darkish light. It's tan. I'm going to use this for the Seeking Refuge. It's a really big pattern. And so I'm really excited to use this fabric. It's a 40 count. I've never done 40 count before. So we'll see how it goes. I also got the Ye Old Crow Sampler. Oh, goodness. There we go. I saw Elizabeth Ann Kinstitch is a floss tuber that I follow. And she stitched this on a really pretty dark linen. It was Tiger's Eye. I think it was 40 count. And I really enjoyed it, so I bought this pattern. And I also got this 28 count flash Castile linen. It's a really pretty orange. I think I'm gonna try to coffee tea dye it just to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna stitch that pattern on it. I think it'd be really pretty for Halloween. So that, and then I also got some 28 um, needles, number 28 needles because with stitching on the linen, I needed a different needle. I've never stitched with before. I believe that is all of the haul that I have. I don't think I have anything else. Nope, I do not. Okay. So lastly, I wanna talk about a couple different books that I really enjoy. Um, I'm just gonna highlight maybe one, one or two, maybe three books. I think today I have three books. Um, that I'm going to just talk about why I enjoy them, um, give you a quick summary of it. I also have a picture, oh, so I have an Instagram. Um, it's called, it's books and X stitches on Instagram. Books, books and X stitches. So go on that and look um, at, there I post um, videos, not videos, maybe videos later. Um, I stitch what I've stitched through the week and also favorite books that I've read. So let me show those really fast. So first I'll show you the two books I posted on Instagram. I was trying to think of a good like post-apocalyptic books that I really enjoy. Um, so the first one is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is a really awesome book. So basically it's a post-apocalyptic book and it's these actors and musicians that travel on in this troupe and they do performances of different like Shakespeare and different kinds of music um, that you don't see they don't see anymore because of what happened in the book and it's just kind of as they travel they encounter some dangerous people and some crazy events happen and it kind of makes you think a lot about like what you would miss in that kind of situation and also like you know good and bad people like there's no kind of what I took away from it is like there's no like absolute black and white like good and bad people everybody kind of has gray and um anyway it's just a really good book it makes you think and maybe even cry the next book is good morning midnight and this is by lily brooks dalton this is another really excellent book. I It's one I haven't really heard a ton of ab about until I got it. I think I just went to Barnes and Noble and got it there and I was blown away. It was just really good. So it follows two different kind of camps almost in a way, not a camp, but like two different groups. So the first group it, star it follows is Augustine and he is an astronomer who lives in like the Arctic and this unknown event happens that kind of the world kind of ends and he is kind of cut off from the world and is dealing with like the loneliness and the depression and the like unknown of what has happened. He encounters um, a little girl who was left behind and kind of grapples with raising her in these times. 
The other group it follows is the um, a space specialist mission that is coming back from Jupiter, and um, her name is Sullivan. And when they, as they're traveling back from Jupiter, mission control goes silent, and so they're stuck with the like wondering, you know, where do we do? What has happened? Do we go back? Do we, like, they have to go back because they don't have food. You know, they'll run out of, like, fuel and all that kind of stuff. And so it's them kind of coming to grips with the unknown of, like, what has happened and are their loved ones okay and everything. It, this book is really great. It focuses a lot on, like, your love, like, loss and loving the people around you and just, you know, what's important in life. So it's, and also loneliness, depression, anxiety. It's just, it's a really awesome, awesome book. Okay. The last book I'm going to show is probably one of my f absolute favorites. It's, um, one I read many, many years ago, but I think about a lot. When I was, um, younger, I had a love of Mount Everest and just a fascination with climbing, mountaineering, that kind of thing. I, I would never climb it. Just, I'm, I'm not in shape for it or even know how to do it. So, but the book, I can travel there. The great thing is I can travel there through books. And so one of my favorites is Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. And this book is about, it's a true story. It's um, about these climbers in 1995 or seven, six, 1996. I was close. Um, who climb Mount Everest. And it's about the, one of the worst disasters that happened in the history of people climbing on Everest. Um, there was a massive storm that hit while people were up um, on the mountain, up in the in the death zone, and it was multiple groups um, from different countries that were climbing that day, and a group of Americans, and them trying to get back off the mountain with this storm coming and everything. It's a real tur paint turner. Um, there's a book, or a, another book, there's a movie called Everest that came out that's kind of based on this story. Um, I won't give away what happens, but it is super, super good. Um, I just, it, it's just a really fascinating um, look into mountaineering and climbing of Everest and the ramifications of that um, psychologically for climbing and like the physicality of it, but also like the environmental kind of effect of it as well, like having that many people up on the mountain and that kind of thing. Anyway, excellent, excellent book. I totally recommend it. So I think that is everything that I was going to talk about today. I really hope you enjoy. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe down below and comment on what you're working on right now or what your favorite book is. And if you have any suggestions or things I can improve on with my videos, maybe not saying um so much, please put them down below. But, you know, obviously be respectful of people commenting. Be kind. If there's something you don't agree with, just scroll on. You don't have to comment on it or anything like that. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed and hope to see you again next week. Bye.